Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we just had two firings, three, three firings in the NHL. We're going to talk about it. Uh, yeah, Philadelphia Flyers, Vancouver just chose the same day to say, out of here. Um, We'll talk about we'll talk about each one of them. I'm going to be reading some articles from the Athletic, to give us some facts, and then I'll put my take on the fine frolic. This is all part of Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Uh, if you like the four major sports and and uh, things within those four major sports, information, frolic, all of those scores, everything you'll like, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. And the NHL Portal of Wisdom show, which I do weekdays from 3 to 5 Eastern. If you want to discuss any of this stuff I'm talking about, go there, go to my channel, sub yourself up right now, hit the like button. A lot of, I get so many views on my things, but people don't like it. They don't like, they like to watch, they, don't like to watch it or so I don't know but they don't hit the like button anyways if you like it touch the like button helps me out a lot brings more people to the land you know but anyways if you want to discuss this or anything about your team any team all 32 teams NHL Pearl Wisdom Show I'm always there to engage in whatever you want to talk about it's lots of fun all right so let's look at these two firings that, for me anyways, I seem pretty much apparent that this was going to come up. Three firings from two teams. Here we go. Alain Vigneau, amid eight-game losing streak. Eight-game losing streaks have a way to get a coach fired, don't they? Uh, also, they had a horrible year last year. Uh, there's no more excuses here. And uh, I, before I go into the article, I, I want to talk about a little bit about some of the things. I'm kind of a Flyers fan. And we're going to be talking about this on my show for sure. Steel, part of Steel Flyers. Uh, Joe, also part of Steel Flyers. Pro Joe, go check him out. Uh, Sports Fanatic News. We all said that we didn't like the way they were talking and acting Last year, making excuses is what this team did last year. And uh, Alan Vigneau was part of it too. Well, there was no excuses now. Carter Hart was playing well. They did some, they made some changes, bringing Atkinson in, uh, trading Boracek. And uh, um, I always forget his name. All right, we'll get into that because we're going to look at the roster. Ristolina, that's what I'm trying to say. And, uh, of course, Ellis, who's been injured. But they made some changes, and this team still did not play with pace at all. And that's really what the biggest problem with this team is. Uh, the Flyers fired head coach Alan Vigneault on Monday after a 7-1 loss to the Tampa Bay Lightning. 7-1 losses have a way of getting <laughs> coaches fired as well. Uh, assistant coach Mike Yule will serve as interim coach as the team plays the Colorado Avalanche. On Monday, which is today. Mike Yeo, by the way, was a guy that came in after, I believe in Minnesota, after Boudreaux got fired, who we're going to talk about in a bit here. And that he turned that team around for about a season. Uh, they went on a pretty good run. So he's a good raw rock guy. Gets you excited, ready for your game, for the game, gets you up. And, uh, he may be able to turn this around a little bit, and we'll look at that. We'll look at the chances of that happening for Philly here as well. Uh, v- Vigno was 22 games into his third season as Philadelphia's head coach. The Flyers had dropped to 8, 10, and 4, and were seventh in the Metropolitan Division after Sunday's loss. Philadelphia ranks 30th in the NHL with 51 goals in 22 games. This team can't score. Their power play, Tyrion was also fired. Actually, it's four people. Tyrion was also fired, who was in control of a power play that is, I believe is the worst in the league or close to it. So, yeah, that's probably – and why are you putting Tyrion as your power play coach? 
Terry and him is always a defensive minded coach. Always. He was always defense. He should be at any, at best a penalty kill coach. So, um, the team made the playoffs in Bingo's first season and then lost in seven games against the New York Islanders. Uh, then Vigno signed a five-year deal worth five million. He's they remain on the hook for two and a half years, so he'll be all right. You know, he's going to be okay. <laughs> it's not not going to be uh, empty in the cupboard for for Vigno. But before I go on here, I will say I think it's quite possible that this is it for Vigno as a head coach for quite some time, if not forever. Um. He, he was in uh, – when he was in New York, they did well. There was a whole thing about him not playing young players enough. They did okay. They did okay. In Vancouver, he went to Vancouver. I think they had a good – when he first got there, they did well, much like in Philadelphia. And then things started to fall off again. Philadelphia started and then fell off even faster. So I have a feeling that his resume now has some red flags for most general managers out there that probably he will not get a job for a while. In short, it seems like he, oh, by the way, I should tell you who did this. It was Charlie O'Connor off The Athletic. Athletic is a fantastic publication. I'd highly recommend you. You do have to pay for it, but it's really good. Uh, Charlie O'Connor, Flyers beat writer. And this is a beat writer that did it. Seems like he and his message are no longer having the desired effect in the Flyers' lo- locker room. I don't know what his message is, but yeah, if his, I doubt his messages look really slow and take too long to make decisions. And that's really what Philadelphia is happening with Philadelphia. They're taking way too long to make decisions. By the end, Flyers were getting obliterated nightly five on five, and their power play in particular lacked cohesion, anything remotely resembling effectiveness. <laughs> that is the so true. I mean, you can't really butter it up. The if you're not making decisions quickly, your power play is probably going to be pretty crappy. And they weren't making decisions quickly. I'd say that's the number one reason why Philadelphia has played so poor. And that usually goes with confidence. A coach's main job is to give players confidence, help players have confidence. So, yeah, you have really no choice but to let them go. Ah, who will they target in the coaching search? And the hot name is Rick Tockett, who is just inducted in the Flyers Hall of Fame and is available. Um, they believe He believes that Bush... Bruce Boudreau was a candidate, but obviously he went into Vancouver, which we'll talk about in a second. And John Tortorella is an intriguing possibility. I would be, I, I, okay, out of the three, I don't mind Rick Tockett. I don't mind John Tortorella, of course, two, actually. Um, but the thing with Rick Tockett, you have to understand, at least from what he did in Arizona, is he's an extremely defensive coach. I, I don't get the feeling that Rick Tockett is the guy you want to hire if you're having trouble scoring. Um, Arizona had trouble scoring the whole time they were there. Now, is that a roster thing? Can Rick Tockett change it up and start working with this roster to help them in the scoring side of things? Maybe. I mean... It's possible. It's possible that he was just working with what he had. Kemper, Ranta, so not much scoring. So we're just going to play a very defensive game and try to win games two to one. You can't blame a coach for that. I'm not sure if Rick Tockett has a ability to bring in a system that can be more offensive for the Philadelphia Flyers. If he can, then I would say it's a pretty good guy to have considering the respect he would have in the room as a longtime Philadelphia Flyers fan or player. And um, apparently people loved him when he left Arizona. Like nobody had a bad word to say about him. So it could be a great pickup for Philadelphia if that's the case. If not, as far as systems are concerned, I'm not so sure. John Tortorella, who is known – to be this overly defensive coach, I believe is more is better suited to play a more offensive game if necessary. 
Uh, he won a cup with Tampa Bay. They weren't a defensive team. They weren't. They had the guns to be able to score. They had the Cali, Marty St. Louis, and they played like that. So, yeah, he, he got that in Columbus where they didn't really have a lot of talent. So he played a more defensive game around his goaltender. Made Bobrovsky look fantastic, if you remember. Um, personally, for me, Tortorella is a guy. I would be interesting to see, I'd be interested to see what Atkinson would think of that. Because Atkinson was in Columbus, and now you're bringing another coach. They would probably, you know, they would probably talk to Atkinson about it. What did you think of John when he was in there? Is that, you know, did he have anything to do with the reason why you seem to want to be out of Columbus at the end? I don't think so. Since he Tortorella got fired and they were going to have a new coach anyways, I think it had much more to do with the fact that it was difficult time watching Panarin's go and all of that. And he wanted to go to a more secure franchise that are going to bring in people and keep them. So my guy would be John Tortorella. Tell me what you guys think about that. Um, I'm a big Tortorella fan. A lot of people aren't, but um, I think he's fantastic. That would be my guy off the top. Now, if if they have an inkling that Rick Tockett can play an offensive game, you know, I, I like them both, but f- that would be – I haven't seen it from Rick Tockett. I have seen it from Tortorella. That's why I pick him. Um, can this season be salvaged? I think this te- – they're only – okay, we we're going to look at this right now. Mm, that's not it. All right. Can this season be salvaged? Philadelphia Flyers are have 20 points in 22 games. And, uh, you know, they have two games – with with Pittsburgh, who is they have two games in hand, and Detroit. This is for the wild card. It's the wild card, and Detroit as well. They have three games in hand now. They still got to get over Boston and Columbus, um, but they're only three points and four points behind them. Yes, they can come back from this. No doubt about it. Sorry, five points and six points. Can they come back? Sure, you go on a run, man. How many times have we seen teams go on a run midway through the season? There's still 60 games left. So the guy they pick to coach this team should have a track record of being able to turn around a team quick. I don't think Tockett has that track record. I think it's Tortorella. I think Tortorella is the guy for this organization. Tell me what you guys think. All right, let's look at the next one here now. Oh, wait, I wanted to look at Philadelphia here um, and see some of the reasons why they were fired. Claude Giroux, 19 points in 22 games. Most underrated guy out there. Sean Couturier, 14 and 22, and then it drops off. like Atkinson, 13 goals in 22. That's probably what he is. Eight goals in 22 games isn't too bad. But Morgan Frost, Hayes was injured. Travis Konechny under uh, Vangio has not been able to be what he once looked like he was going to be. Uh, James Von Re- Ran Reemsdyke, after a great season last year, is not living up to it this year. And Oscar Limblom, one point in 21 games. There, Ristolainen was brought in. He doesn't look good as far as I'm concerned. I just don't see how Vengo has worked this team to got this team to gel under a short time. And maybe it's not fair to ask a guy to do something like that because a short time meaning that they changed the team quite a bit and they really had to get this going right away. And he was kind of on a hot seat to have that happen. Might be unfair to ask a coach, but the truth of the matter is this is the NHL. You're the best in the world. That's your job. You got to do it. He didn't do it. And truth be known, Carter Hart has looked better, but not great. Marty Jones is about what he always is. And also, the guy who's injured right now, Joel Faraby, has not looked good this year. There's just too many players in this roster that did not look good this year. Somewhere along the line, you can't change all the players. Unfortunately, it ends up being the coach. All right. Next, we will go to the other big firing. 
And uh, I hope Vangio does land somewhere, give himself one more shot. But honestly, I really don't think it's going to happen. Canucks bringing in Bruce, Bruce Boudreau and firing Travis Green. Um, the shakeup finally happened. Everybody, and also Jim Benning as well. Jim Benning is fired. And all, both of them are fired. Um, assistant coach Nolan Baumgartner and Stan Smeal, who served as senior advisor to the GM in, since the 2008 season. That's tough. Stan Smeal has been a long time. That must be hard on him to lose, to, to get fired out of there. Uh, the Canucks are bringing Bruce Boudreau, Bruce Boudreau in on a two-year deal. These are difficult decisions we believed would have would, would have a competitive group this year. We believed we would have a competitive group this year. Canucks chairman Francesco Aquilini said in the statement, as a result, I like that name. Cool name. As a result, I'm extremely disappointed in how this team has performed so far. I'm making these changes because we want to build a team that competes for championships and it's time for a new leadership to take us here. In included in Saturday night's 4 1 loss to the Penguins, the Canucks have lost 10 of their last 13 games and 8 15 and 2 this season. Um, Bruce Boudreau last coached in the NHL in 1920 when he was fired by Minnesota, 57 games into his fourth season. He compiled a 567, 302, and 115 record, 984 games, just short of 1,000, with the Caps, Ducks, and Wild over 13 seasons. Uh, he won the Jack Adams Award in 2007-8, leading the Caps and Ducks to four straight playoff appearances. Now, the problem with Boudreau has been that he has not had much success in the playoffs. That's always been the thing. I hope he gets a chance to get over it over here and over this now. But um, I've been talking about this quite a bit if you've been watching my videos, that it was probably the case that Green was going to get fired. I don't think he deserves to get fired. I think Benning was the guy that had to go. This roster was poorly constructed. I don't know what Boudreaux is going to do with it, but I honestly doubt very much it's going to be much better. This organ this team needs a different view from someone. Benning was terrible at contracts. It's well known. Uh, we'll look at that in a second. Harma Harmon Dial, Canucks beat writer. Uh, why now? Why, why the firing? The playoffs looks as close to attainable as they can in, er can in early December. The tipping point came Saturday against the Penguins when fans were booing and somebody actually threw a jersey on the rink. And it just was bad. The team could not get, could not score. They looked like they were fighting it all the time. No matter what Green could do, it did. It didn't seem to loosen up. There's been talk about problems the way management treats the players, um, just poorly constructed. And I'll look at that in a second by why I think Benning should have been fired long before this. Uh, what makes Boudreaux the right fit? Boudreaux has consistently managed to extract value from rosters that he has coached. This is so true. Um, he has an excellent track record in regular season with Minnesota, yes. Boudreaux has typically been well-liked by players and excelled implementing an up-tempo offensive style. That's something that they need here. And the other thing about Bruce Boudreaux is he's really, really funny. He's a funny guy. And he's fun. And he likes to have his players have fun. And he seems to be really good at bringing that to a room. And if any team needs that right now, it's Vancouver. I think this is a good hiring by Vancouver at this point to see if they can get the guys like Peterson, man, that he is just fighting it so hard right now. Can't seem to score. We'll look at his, uh, we'll look at the roster, the way it was constructed here in a second, and why Benning as well was be fired. This article doesn't go into that. And what this team, maybe, maybe what the next general manager might do here. Um, 
Here we go. So they are way out of the playoffs. I mean, unlike Philadelphia, it is not likely that Vancouver's coming back out of this. 18 points they need to catch up. Nashville, San Jose at 27. They have so many teams in front of them. The likelihood of them having a playoff picture, it being in the playoff picture right now is super slim. This team just needs to have fun and try to get some goals going and some good vibes going into next season. Start believing they actually have a team. And I think Boudreaux was a good pick from there. But let's go with Benning here. Uh, this team, we'll look at the contracts, some of the contracts that Benning has put together. Elias Peterson was a good contract, but it hasn't been working out for him as of late. They got Breck Busser coming up, and Bo, Bo Horvat was okay was a pretty good contract on a bridge. But guys like um, they, he is well known. Benning was well known for giving guys like Sutter, who is injured right now, Brandon Sutter. Uh, before this, he was making four, three million and he re signed him for a million sum and he wasn't really doing anything. Um, I got to look up Arizona. I'll show you a couple of the contracts that he gave that now Arizona has. Antoine Roussel, $3 million. He signed him to a $3 million. Uh, this is the last year of that contract, but it was like four years Jay Beagle, also $3 million for like four years. Crazy contracts to lower-end players. Plus, like I said, already Sutter was making about that as much. Just recently signed Tucker Pullman to 2.5 for four years. Nobody was taking – I cannot see anybody giving Tucker Pullman a four-year contract. Nobody. At 2.5, most teams, Tucker Pullman would barely be in a top six, if at all. Those are million-dollar players, and he gave them $2.5 million a year. Tyler Myers has always been poor defensively. $6 million long-term, try to use him as a top two, which he wasn't. And then, of course, the deal that I just talked about – where they traded, uh, oh, and Louis Erickson uh, about Arizona. He gave him $6 million back in the day, and he did nothing for the Vancouver Canucks. Then traded all of them to take on Ekman Larson's contract. And uh, let's look at what Eric, uh, Ekman Larson has done, shall we? Whoops. Five points in 25 games, playing 22 minutes a night. That's $7.3 million a year. Like everything this guy, that guy touched contract-wise turned to crap. He did a pretty good job of getting JT Miller. Drafting wasn't too bad. He also got Connor Garland in that deal, which is looking pretty good right now. But mostly... On defense especially, he didn't seem to be able to identify talent, overpaid for players, grabbed players that were on the downside, it appears, such as uh, Oliver ekman Larson, and it was just all falling apart. And the worst part about it is all the players that he did trade away, he never replaced with players that could play very well on the penalty kill. This is the worst penalty kill team in the league. It's poorly constructed, doesn't seem to have any chemistry. He had to go. It was a long time coming. Vancouver fans, tell me what you got to say about Benning. I'm sure you're going to have a lot to say about it. So that's my take on what happened in those two firings. That's my full 42, everybody. Tell me what you think in the comment section of everything I just said. And I'll be back. I got to do my show now. Go watch my show. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.